Ümumiyyətlə, cəmiyyətin şirkətlərin dəyişə bilməsi, onları formalaşdıran fərdlərin davranış və yanaşmalarını dəyişdirə bilməsindən asılıdır. Bizim davranış və yanaşmalarımıza təsir edən bir çox faktor, zəif və güclü tərəflərimiz var ki, bunların fərqində olmağımız düzgün qərarları da ala bilməyimizə və ən əsası dəyişikliyə daha rahat uyğunlaşmamıza səbəb olur. Qoğuşların da əsas vəzifələrindən biri məhz insanların fərqindəlik səviyyələrinin artırılmasına vasitəçi olmaqdır. Bu mövzu ilə bağlı Doroti Siminovic öz dərin təcrübəsini bizimlə bölüşəcək. Doroti Siminovic, fəlsəfə doktoru, MCC, liderlik, komanda və təşkilatı üzrə beynəlxalq koç, mentor koç, speaker və yazıçıdır. Gestalt Coaching Works LLC şirkətinin təsisçisi və direktorıdır. O, Gestalt Coaching Primer Awareness Towards IQ kitabının müəllifi və Awareness 2020 liderliyi dərk etmənin dəyərləndirmə alətinin həm müəllifidir. Səhnəyə xanım Doriti Siminoviçi dəvət edirik. Dərəs biti. Səlam, burada olmaqdan çox mutluyum, amma şimdə bu qədər. Language, language is a figure. I'm feeling just the fullness of all the languages in the room. So I appreciate that I can speak with you in English. And this moment, I'm going to ask us just to start paying attention to a little shift where I invite you to start paying attention to your awareness and what you're aware of. And the first thing I'm going to invite you to look at is me. You're already looking at me, but I want to say to you, make me a figure of your attention, okay? Now I'd like to invite you to look at the wall behind me. Shift your attention to the wall behind me and make the wall a figure of your attention. And then ask yourself, what happens to me? Dorothy becomes a little bit blurry. Okay? Now bring your attention back to me. And what do you notice to the wall? The wall becomes a little bit blurry. Okay? What you've just done with me is something from Gestalt psychology called a figure ground formation. I've invited you intentionally to make me a figure where the wall becomes background. And then when I ask you to pay attention to the wall, Dorothy becomes background because the wall is your figure. Simple, right? Ah, but then we could start saying we think that a figure for me is not a figure for you. So all of us now are sitting, maybe, as you're sitting and looking at me, some of you maybe might be thinking and holding a figure, maybe some of you might be thinking of work. Anyone in here thinking a little bit about work? Anybody? That's a figure. Anyone thinking a little bit about something with your children? That's a figure. Anyone thinking a little bit about what am I going to buy for dinner? Ah, dinner. That's a figure. <laughs> Maybe I should say lunch. That's another figure. Maybe I should say bathroom. That's a figure. It's not that one figure is necessarily worse or better than the other. It's that a figure has energy. And our job as a coach, our job as a leader, is to understand the figure that's holding a person's attention. That's our job. And yet, very often, what we do is we stay with our attention on the figure when it's work, on the figure when it's an agenda. And what we may miss is the moment. So all over the world now, we see this figure that's called mindfulness. Mindfulness. You'll see advertisements for the mindful leaders, the mindful coach, the mindful cook, the mindful parent. And why? Because we know that the world, as Riza told us, is moving so quickly, it's hard to pay attention in the moment because so many figures. So let me just give you a little shocking figure if we're working with an executive and we want to have an understanding of the executive's challenges, I'm just going to ask you, what do you think might be the number of the amount of decisions 
an executive has to make a day. I'm just going to give you some numbers, and I'm going to ask you. Anyone think that executives has to make at least 50 decisions? Hands up. OK, anyone think that number is too low? It has to be at least 100. All right, maybe not very generous. Anyone think, let's just go higher, 500. Anyone for 500? Uh-huh. Anyone for more than 500 a day? Anyone for 1,000? How about I tell you that the figure of decisions an executive has to make a day we think is 3,500 decisions a day. Surprise? 300 of those decisions are, what shall I eat? The combinations, a little salt, no, I won't have that bread, no, I will have this. And in fact, the more you know about food, the more you're thinking, really, what shall I eat for my energy, for my brain, for my stamina, for my waist? All these decisions. Children make about 200 decisions a day. Okay? But what does that mean? That means that the idea of paying attention in itself is a challenge because the world, as Riza just told us, is moving so quickly, it'll never be this slow again. How do we hold the challenge of paying attention where now we have this new understanding that we have knowledge and that you see is a vertical line, but we actually don't know how to be in the moment and use our awareness. And that's very interesting because awareness now is linked to adaptability, to innovation, to resilience, even to happiness. Interesting. And yet, awareness as a figure is also influenced by our mindset, how we look at the world with a positive or negative. Yes, I think. I can change this. No, I think I can't. If we look at situations, what's our resistance? And again, the word resistance is a huge concept, which means how do I look at the world with enough boundary to support my identity, not say yes to everything, but after a while, the things that I say no to become my character, and I don't even know that I'm closing down on possibilities and maybe not looking at awareness, awareness possibilities in a moment. I may get so used to saying no to certain things that I don't know it's time to say yes. Maybe the biases. There's a new concept, there's a, a new interest in helping people in the workplace get interested in their unconscious bias. If we're talking about globalization and we're talking about teams, then we have to help people understand to be aware of where they are in their zone of discomfort. The other thing about awareness that influences us is our history. How many times do we look at the situation and we say, what would my mother think? What would my father think? What's the history that I bring that influences how I look at the world? And then the interesting thing is, what are the dreams that I hold that prepare me to look at situations as opportunities? And do I give myself permission to dream? Awareness is now considered a 21st century competency because the world is moving so quickly that information and knowledge can become quickly outdated. And we actually have to be creative to know how to organize ourselves and use awareness moments. So I like to say that awareness is like a little atom. A moment of awareness can really change the world. So I say in Turkish, it's kuchuk amavyuk, which means that moment, if we can grab it, has opportunity. But how many times do we have a little moment of understanding? Do we see a situation and we ignored it. Anyone know that feeling? Of course, it's human. And then you go home and you think, what did I do that I missed it? And when we miss the moment of knowing that we knew and we let it go, we have regret. And so one of the challenges that I think for us as coaches, for us as leaders, for us as people that want to inspire people to be better and at their best is, 
how to use this moment when you knew. And you have to ask yourself, how do I use what I knew? So I'd like to invite you to consider, and these are the challenges of our presence, how do we use ourselves? Because all of us, I think, are agents of awareness. All of us can say, pay attention. Look at this situation. All of us can recognize when other people are maybe not engaged with us. How do we use it as an awareness agent? So I want to invite you to consider seven dimensions of awareness. And I think the number seven has always been considered as very powerful in memory theories. It's also kind of an important number of our energy centers. And the idea of using ourselves is the signature element in using our awareness is something called use of self. Let me recognize what my gifts of awareness are and in the moment know how to respond to what I'm aware of that's an answer to a figure that is wanted, needed, or missing. So the first idea that I'd like to suggest to you is all of us have to answer the question of who am I, Ben Kimim? Who am I and what are my values and what do I stand for? And do I recognize what others stand for? You know, they say when people are clear about their values, when people are clear about who they are, they walk in the world in a different way. So the first question of coaching that we would say is, are you congruent? Are you together with your values? And we as coaches can support people to do the work of coming closer to really what matters. It's not about this is more important than that. It's about you need to know if your that is your this. You need to know what your values are. And so awareness of self, how we are standing in the world, how we are standing for something, is one of the very home-based questions that we have as coaches and we have as leader. The second dimension of awareness is your capacity for creativity, for trying and supporting new possibilities. And I don't mean anything just only as radical, but even a tiny little difference in how a person can see something is a possibility. And if we're talking about creativity, one of the things that we also want to suggest is your comfort with making mistakes. We say, no mistakes, no learning. But if you make a mistake, how comfortable are you in learning with that and accepting that? So what, what you just heard from Riza is, if you're going to fail, fail fast. What we would say is, if you're going to fail, fail small, fail early, fail with support. And this is the comfort zone that we can create as a coach with our client, is how to have little learning moments. Because without creativity, we are going to be bored. And so often, people have a should or a resistance. I shouldn't try something new because I might fail. And one of the things that we as coaches can support is, yes, you need to have these failure moments, because otherwise, you're not going to be in a place to innovate. The third element of awareness is this interesting element that we're hearing all over the world, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence sounds wonderful until emotion kind of takes you and hijacks you, right? And so one of the things that we say is we really want to, as coaches, understand to recognize when an emotion, first of all, in our own home base, where are we in how we can handle emotions from very intense pain to very uh, uh, intense anger? What's our range of comfort and discomfort? And this is where practices for emotional self-regulation ma uh, matter. And also, how can we recognize in our clients when they are about to have an emotional, what we call, hijack? Neuroscience has really let us know that when people get emotionally upset, and you can see it like, a, like something's happening, their breathing changes, their look changes, and here's the worst part, their thinking goes down. So just at a moment when people get stressed and scared, their brain shuts off, and what do we know? Simple breathing practices can help people be in more self-regulation. We say that love and anger and fear encodes learning. 
So if we want to support people in learning, we need to really understand how to do emotional intelligence awareness. The next piece I want to suggest to you is all of us live in the world where care is important. It's a human function to care for ourselves, to care for others. What's our awareness when our caring is being neglected? And what's our awareness when people are missing an opportunity to reach out and hold each other with caring? All over the world, who's an example of that these days? Prime Minister of New Zealand. Look at the impact of this woman, Jacinda Ahern, who says, I am empathetic and I make no apology. And her level of care has influenced the kind of healing we haven't seen since Mahatma Gandhi, we haven't seen even since Nelson Mandela. It's a moment of awareness that can transform what is possible for leaders. The next piece of awareness to manage is communication. Even as I'm talking, I feel like, am I being clear? How to help our leaders and we as coaches be clear in our message. It's not about giving a speech like Obama, uh, Ob uh, not Trump, but Barack Obama. Big difference, right? But when Obama used to speak, it was always eloquent. No, it's about saying what needs to be said in the moment that needs to be said. And so one of the things for coaches is that we can support our leaders in how they are communicating, sharing their vision. The next area for awareness management is what's our intuition? Intuition is getting a lot of recognition in the business workplace because people ha will have an idea. And very often they think, well, it's not feasibility, it's not science. I quickly tell you about um, Hamadi Ulagaya, the, the CEO of Chibani uh, Yogurt. In 2005, he wasn't doing particularly well, and yet he found a little pamphlet for, for a craft food to sell an old yogurt company, which he threw away but decided to go visit, and the rest is history. It's only been since 2007 that the genius of Chibani has changed the sector of, of yogurt. Think about that. Use of self and intuition. And the last piece I also want to say is, how do we scan the field for threats and opportunities? Sometimes an opportunity is a threat that forces us to be sharper, and yet very often people stop paying attention. I don't know how many people remember um, the Blackberry in the late 90s, it ruled the market. And yet as a company, they stopped paying attention to, they needed to innovate to really change and become a smartphone. And the rest is history. We don't hear them anymore. So I want to say, how is it that we use ourselves as, a ch as an awareness agent? All of us need to respond to, what is the figure that matters, that is wanted, that is needed, or maybe missing? And so often people will say, well, how do I do that? And I'll tell you how I remember years ago, I had to go buy something um, in a store, and I, it was on my way home, and I thought, if I don't buy it now, I won't have this light bulb. And I had to go into a store, and I did not like the owner of the store because he was kind of inappropriate. We all know examples of people who are, we'd like to avoid. And of course, when I went into the store, he was checking the people out. Uh, and I thought, well, I can get through this line very quickly. And as I stood in the line, I heard someone say water, and I heard him say, you can get a glass of water downstairs. And I thought, I wonder what that is. And I looked, and I saw a little old unwell lady. She had just bought some, pharma some medication. He was a pharmacist. She asked again, can I get a glass of water? What would you do? How would you use yourself to respond to the awareness of, water, she needs it. And in that moment, I saw that he was not giving her a glass of water and nobody was answering, that she did not look well, and the water fountain was about half a mile away in this huge mall. And I remember that moment where I stood out of the line and I looked at this owner of this company, of this store, and I gave him the look, the look from my mother. The look like, what? And it took three seconds. He saw me, I saw him, he saw me seeing him, and it got communicated, you understand who you are, you failed. And in four seconds, he turned to this woman and said, I'll just get you a glass of water in a moment. Everyone looked at me and said, who are you? And that is the question, who are we? In this world now, 
in each of your worlds, there are figures that are begging for you to respond to, that are wanted, that are needed, that are missing. You have clients, and we all want to be making a difference in the world. If anything, we want to make our world better at every generation. How to make our world better is our challenge. So I ask you to all with me take a breath. And I invite you to ask yourself, what are you aware of that you have longing for, to respond to? Awareness is a moment of deep knowing from your values, from your creativity, from your emotional space, from your heart, from your communication, from your sense of what's coming. What do you have a longing for that you want to respond to? Because the world is hungry, and you are what the world is waiting for. Thank you. <laughs>